Hello guys, welcome back. Today I would like to do some miscellaneous questions that I thought would be helpful for you guys. So let's get on to it. So first off we have the integral from well it's indefinite rule. 1 plus 2 tan x then we have tan x plus secant of x in a bracket and then the whole integrand is raised to the one half power dx now looking at this I would you know want to multiply everything inside by this uh, this tangent of x so let's do that then we have uh, integral of 1 plus 2 tan squared x plus 2 sec x tan x then uh, everything is raised to the one half power dx now you know looking at the abundance of looking at the abundance of uh, the tangents and secant terms i want to convert everything into sine and cosine so let's go ahead and do that so then we have uh, 1 plus 2 sine squared x over uh, cosine squared x plus 2 where well we have the sine because of the tangent sine x over then secant x is 1 over cos and then we have the cos from the tan so we have a cos squared x but everything is just raised to the one half power dx and uh, well I'm just cross multiplying all the cos co cosine squared with this one in the end we just have uh, cos squared x plus uh, 2 sine squared x plus 2 sine x and uh, yeah all this is raised to the one half power and then you know since there was a cos square in the denominator I, I'm putting it out I'm you know applying the square root on that the one half power on that and I just have the cos of x dx now you know we can totally do, do um, we can totally do a, a trigonometric substitution but we need we need we need something to you know go with the dx right we need like a cos or sine term so what i want to do is i want to multiply the numerator and denominator by a cosine term because then we have a cosine squared of x and which can be written in terms of sine easily so cosine squared of x and we have a cos x outside and now we can do the great substitution because we have the cos x dx and let let cos x be the derivative so we can say let let t be such a sin of x such that dt is equal to just this outside part cosine of x dx and we can just write our integral in terms of t so well uh, cosine squared of x is nothing but 1 minus sine squared of x so we have 1 minus t squared plus 2t squared plus 2t all over 1 minus t squared and then let's not forget there is a 1 half power on the top and dt because cos x dx was dt now I'll just you know cancel clean the numerator a bit so I have t squared plus 2t plus 1 everything raised to the one half power but divided by 1 minus t squared dt now you might realize this is this is this is but t plus 1 the whole squared t plus 1 the whole square but 
it still raised to the one half power and the great part is these are going to cancel out in the next step 1 minus p squared dt well yes the powers indeed cancel out and then uh, we are we can we just have integral of t plus 1 over 1 minus t squared dt now i want to you know separate this in terms of two integrals because yeah the linearity of integration you can say so the first integral is t over 1 minus t squared dt and then the other integral is integral of 1 dt over 1 minus t squared and now we want the derivative of the denominator on top so I'll multiply by a negative half and a negative 2 because derivative of uh, 1 minus p squared is minus 2t so we have that now and uh, if you know the, the derivative of a function divided by that function is nothing but the natural log of the absolute value of that function and this um, I'll just directly use the formula for now 1 over 2 times whatever constant we had so it was 1 so 1 times the natural log of 1 plus t over 1 minus t plus c now I have to back substitute everything so uh, well my substitution was t is equal to cosine of x so 1 minus cosine squared of x is nothing but sine squared of x plus 1 over 2 times the natural log of 1 plus uh, cosine of x yeah I'm so sorry it, the substitution was t is equal to sine of x so instead of all this we have um, 1 minus sine squared of x which is nothing but cosine squared of x in 1 plus uh, with 1 plus yeah, sorry the sine of x over 1 minus the sine of x plus c now you might want to simplify this a bit so we can bring the the cos we can bring the square you know multiply the log by this power we just have minus 1 log of cosine of x and negative log of cosine we can take the negative in and then flip the argument we have 1 over cosine of secant of x plus uh, 1 by 2 times the natural log now if you want to divide everything by uh, the cosine it's okay we have the secant x plus tangent of x over the secant of x minus the tangent of x plus c. I mean this step was unnecessary but you know it just looks clean so well that's our answer there. Now the next question is of uh, inverse trigonometric functions. So it goes like this if the cos inverse of x by a plus the cos inverse of um, y by b equals alpha then we have to prove that uh, x squared by a squared minus 2xy by ab times cosine of alpha plus y squared by b squared is equal to the sine squared of alpha we need to prove this so now looking at the looking at what we have to prove it's it will be a it will be a good step to take sine on both sides of this equation because in what we need in what we need to prove only the the sine of alpha term or here it's the sine squared of alpha term is independent right? because here we have cos of alpha indeed but it's multiplied by this 2xy by ab factor so I think if we write if we take sine on both sides we'll be able to get an independent sine alpha so let's just do that 
so as i said i'm just taking the sign on both sides of uh, sign of the cos inverse of x by a plus the cos inverse of y by b is equal to the sign of alpha now we need to we are going to focus more on this side you know expanding more on this side so we can use the formula of uh, let me use another color so i'm going to use the, this formula sign of a plus b is equal to sign of a cosine of b plus cosine of a times the sign of b i'm going to use this formula now so we have um, well the sign of the first angle so sign of cosine inverse of x by a and the the cos of the second angle cos of cos inverse of y by b is just y by b plus then we have the cos of the first angle so cos of cos inverse of x by a is just x by a and we have the sign of the cos inverse of y by b you can say the sign of the second angle is equal to sin alpha now this is also a formula or you might understand it well with you know, drawing a triangle and you know assuming what writing cos inverse in terms of sin inverse but this is nothing but 1 minus x squared by a squared times y by b outside the radical mind you plus x by a times uh, 1 minus y squared by b squared everything equals the sign of alpha now i i want to clean this up a little bit so i can write this as you know i'm i can cross multiply it with the one i'll get a squared minus x squared and i'll have an a squared under the root i'll take it out of the uh, this radical root and uh, i have y by b outside the radical y by ab plus the same thing here i'm just taking the b outside the radical after cross multiplying times uh, b squared minus y squared is equal to the sign of alpha now if you remember what we had to prove we needed a sin squared of alpha so let's square both sides of what we got over here let's let's square both sides so i'll square this here and i'll square everything here so i'll just for squaring i'll be using uh, a squared plus b squared formula so yeah well so first term squared is well this thing just loses the radical on squaring so we have a squared minus y squared times y squared over a squared b squared plus then this term squared uh this is just be x squared over a squared b squared times then this term loses the radical b squared minus y squared plus two times the product of these two terms so two times x y by a squared b squared times the square root of a squared minus x squared times the square root of b squared minus y squared and all this is just equal to the sin squared of alpha now i want to you know open this bracket over here so in the end when we when i multiply a squared by y squared by a squared b squared a squareds will cancel out and i just have y squared by b squared minus x squared y squared by a squared b squared plus then same thing over here then the b squared will cancel out now i have x squared by a squared minus x squared y squared over a squared b squared And nothing there's nothing we can actually do here so we just write that as it is 2xy by a squared b squared times a squared minus x squared 
times b square minus y square and all this is still equal to the sine square of alpha okay so now i can now this term and this term will just add up and uh, we'll just have y squared by b squared plus x squared by a squared minus 2x squared y squared by a squared b squared i'm adding these two terms and then this crazy term 2xy by a squared b squared times a squared minus x squared times b squared minus y squared still equal to the sine square of alpha now i'll i'll like to you know pull some some something out from this term and this term many things i think are common so y squared by b squared plus x squared by a squared then what's common we have 2xy already common and then the denominator is common a squared b squared so what's left is xy i think yes xy minus this radical term a squared minus b squared times a squared minus x squared uh, sorry times the root of b squared minus y squared and still equal to the sine squared of alpha now if 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 you take a look back at the original question well we have we have this term we have this term we already have this term you know, that's how, where we started the question and if you notice what we took common what we need to show that the other the crazy radical term is the is this 2xy cos of alpha over ab we need to show that so so we we can take stuff uh, out practically that way so instead of taking a squared b squared out let's just take ab out because you know so that we can say that the other factor which is which is multiplied with this thing is the cos of alpha and you know i'm going to show that in a minute so so we have 2xy over ab and now we just need to show that this term is the cos of alpha because everything else is satisfied we have this term we have this term we have this term we have the external factor also we just need to show that this term is uh, the cos of alpha so for that i need to revisit the original question and instead of taking sine on both sides i would like to take the cosine on both sides because you no know, we need a term for cos alpha so i'll just go ahead and do that um wait let me use a fresh page for that so i'm just taking cos on both sides cos inverse of x by a plus the cos inverse of y by b is equal to the cosine of alpha now i like to use uh some identities of the cosine so use a different color to show so if you have cos of a plus b this is cos a times cos b minus sin a sin b so implementing the same now so uh, cos of the first and cos of cos inverse of x by a is just x by a same thing with the, the other angle we have a y by b over here minus uh sin of cos inverse of x by a times the sin of cos inverse of y by b is equal to the cos of alpha now x by a times y by b minus now sin of cos inverse we is like a similar formula 1 minus this term squared so x squared by a squared times similar thing over here one minus y squared by b squared still equal to the cosine of alpha now i'll just clean this up like i did with the sine xy by ab 
minus I'll just have a squared minus x squared times b squared minus y squared and then when a squared gets added to the radical it becomes a and same thing with b so a b is equal to the cosine of alpha fine great we have a term now let's match it let's match it with what we obtained over here initially yeah sorry i forgot to write the ab because there was an a squared b squared and then i said that we just need to take out an ab so the remaining ab factor will still be there so yes indeed this term as i just showed you is the cosine of alpha so i'll just write everything back down properly so we have a square x square by a square um sorry minus 2xy by ab times the cosine of alpha plus y square by b square is all equal to the sine square of alpha and that's what we had to show so qed that's what we had to show and next we have a differential equation so we have x times the cosine of y by x plus y times the sine of y by x the whole thing multiplied by y times dx and is equal to y times the sine of y by x minus x times the cosine of y by x this whole thing multiplied by x dy now what i'm going to do is that um i need to you know isolate a dy by dx first so i'll divide everything by y dx both sides so that we have a dy by dx term and an x by y term so let's do that so x times the cosine of y by x plus y times the sine of y by x is now equal to well un, uh, well the the stuff that's inside that that just remains the same i'm just going to divide this factor so still have y times the sine of y by x minus x times the cosine of y by x that everything is still is then multiplied with then um x by y dy by dx now now looking at the ratios that we have y by x inside the arguments and x by y and everything i would say that this is a homogeneous uh differential equation so there's only one thing we can do now we can say y is equal to bx and then change dy by dx accordingly so using the product rule here we have v plus x times dv by dx i'll just plug everything in so x is just x um v is y by x so of course we plus vx times sin of v is equal to y is vx times the sin of v minus x times the cosine of v then multiply by this x by y x by y is just 1 by v but we we have a uh, instead of dy by dx now we have v plus x times dv by dx well what can we do now we can just cross multiply everything but before that let me just cancel x from all the terms so x cancels out from all these terms and we can multiply v then so we have v times the cosine of v plus v squared times the sine of v divided by this factor so we have v times the sine of v 
minus the cosine of v is equal to v plus x times dv by dx. Now I'll just bring this v on that side, subtract both sides by v. So then I have v cosine of v plus v squared times the sine of v all over v times the sine of v minus the cosine of v minus v is equal to x times dv by dx cross multiply everything v times the cosine of v plus v squared times the sine of v minus v squared times the sine of v plus v times the cosine of v is equal to dv by dx and yes this is still divided by v sine v minus cosine of v so the great thing is this crazy v squared term just goes away and shift I'll shift everything all these v terms close to the dv because we are getting ready to integrate now so the dx will come on this side is equal to v sine of v minus cosine of v all over well v cos v plus v cos v is 2v times the cosine of v dv and then the dx as I said went this side so then let's integrate both sides now we separated the variable successfully integral of dx is just x we can separate this in terms of integrals so when my when i do that the v's cancel out i have a 1 by 2 factor here and i have a tangent of v dv integrated and then the cosines cancel out i have a factor of 1 by 2 and then dv all over v and uh, okay so let's integrate it now the integral of the, the tangent of x is uh, the natural log of the secant of in this case it's v minus 1 by 2 times the natural log of v plus the constant of integration let's call it c dash now let's divide uh, well I guess you must have realized that I completely forgot this factor of x over here I'll just uh, we'll make the corrections now so we'll have a dx by x here and integrating that gives us a natural log of x so sorry about that well yeah so now we can multiply both uh, everything by 2 we have 2 times the natural log of x and the natural log of the secant of v and what was v y by x right so y by x minus the natural log of v is again y by x plus 2 times uh, c dash is another constant let's call it c yeah that's that's the solution to our differential equation okay so yes one one question that i'm willing to do is y is equal to x by 2 times the square root of a squared minus x squared plus a squared by 2 times the sine inverse of x by a and we have to prove that dy over dx is a square root of a squared minus x squared so let's go ahead and differentiate it without much ado dy by dx 
is um, well let's use the chain rule take the 2 out half out derivative of x is just 1 so this factor along with it plus x times the derivative of this inside so we'll have 2 times the square root of a square minus x square already and um, the, the derivative of uh, a square minus x square is negative uh, 2x and then we have this sign inverse term that we need to differentiate I'll just do it in the bottom a square by 2 is a constant times the sign inverse of we have derivative of sine inverse is 1 minus the constant square times the derivative of x by a is just 1 by a I can, we'll put it in the front now we we'll just write this term as a squared minus x squared by 2 well 1 2 is gonna definitely cancel out and we have negative x squared by 2 times the a squared minus x squared plus 1 a is gonna cancel out and we have um, with a by 2 times um, a squared minus x squared and then the a squared comes out of this uh, square root and we have a on top a squared now we can definitely factor the second and third terms so let's see what we can get out we can only I think get out uh, let, let, you know let, let's get out half for now because we have um, a squared minus x squared then and then divided by the square root of a squared minus x squared now the now the numerator is just the square of the denominator so in a sense this is just a squared minus x squared all over 2 plus well this thing is uh, square root of a square minus x square the whole thing squared so one one of those cancels out with the denominator and we have a square minus x square all over 2 half plus half is just 1 so a squared minus x squared indeed and that was all equal to dy over dx so that's it we that's what we had to show so guys i hope you enjoyed my video please like share and subscribe i'll be coming up with more content uh, shortly and uh, for those of you who are watching on the on the day of the festival of colors happy holy